Hey, I'm working on a 2006 Volkswagen Jetta TDI with a DSG transmission. And I'm having some issues with the transmission. It's a direct shift gearbox. And it uses this uh, mechatronic control unit here that I've removed from the transmission. I did a previous video on it where I uh, tested all the, uh, the solenoids here. And I t in the other video, I also tested the connectivity of uh, this wiring harness. So, and I've confirmed that the wiring harness is good. And now I'm uh, going to I disconnected the connector here. I'm going to be looking at the uh, pins here coming from the control unit itself. And I believe there may be an issue inside here with one of these pins, and I'll show you why. I, um, I did a capacitive uh, conductance test on each of these pins, and each, each one of these pins responds the same way with the test. It's, uh, it, it's as if you are charging a capacitor when you ap apply an ohmmeter across it. And I found it on pin 2, what I call pin 2 anyway, there's no uh, conductance or capacitive conductance in either direction. And I'll show you what I mean. Uh, you can see the ohmmeter here. I'll start with pin 1, and I'm just checking it to ground, and I'll show you what, what I've been doing. So here's pin 1. So you can see it charges up, and then it shows open. Now if I reverse the polarity, continuing to stay on pin 1, you'll see the same thing happen. Okay, now if I switch to pin 2, there's no, uh, no activity in either polarity. But I go to pin 3, same thing. And on every other pin, you can see on every other pin there's a, that similar capacitive response where it'll charge up and then show it open. And so it leads me to believe that uh, pin 2 has become disconnected from this connector inside onto the uh, onto the control unit. And so what I'm going to do before I uh, so I checked all these pins and they all they all respond the same except pin 2. And pin 2 is actually a common current return for three different uh, solenoids. And so it's a uh, very important. I guess they're all very important. But uh, I've decided I'm going to go ahead and cut open this uh, cover here. On here, I'm going to cut this open and be able to look. I can. I've seen. Uh, I think these pins will come in and get soldered down to a board. And so the trick is to open this uh, panel up without uh, damaging what's inside. But at this point, you know, it's, it doesn't work now, so I'm not risking a whole lot to uh, open it. Uh, the, other, the, other, the only other alternative at this point is to replace it. And that's, uh, this is about a $1,300 part. And I'm not sure if I want to do that on that car, but if I can f repair it, I'll try that. So the first thing I want to do is uh, tape up these ports where the transmission fluid uh, is controlled. And I'm not sure if this tape is going to work for that or not because what I'm taping it to is highly oiled up. But uh, yeah, it looks like it might, might work. I just don't want any uh, plastic debris to get down inside of those ports. Because then I'd basically be trading one problem for another. It doesn't really want to stick, but I might be able to degrease it with some alcohol or something. I think I think that's probably a very good idea because I don't want this coming up. It just the tape just comes right off. And so I'm going to get some degreaser and clean these up as best I can before I start cutting. And what I'm going to choose to tr cut with first is uh, this little burr bit on my Dremel tool. I'm going to try and cut right along here and just cut this corner, this edge, this high edge up and pop this thing open. And then I'll use some high temperature silicone 
if I get to the point where I open it up, find a problem, and want to close it and put it back in the car, uh, that's wishful thinking, but uh, that's my goal. If I can do that, I will use some high temperature silicone to seal it back. But I'm going to go get some degreaser and take care of these parts to tape it up before I proceed any further. Okay, I've uh, degreased it and taped up all the ports, and I also went ahead and uh, put some aluminum foil around it just to help it. Uh, stay clean. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can cut this uh, seam here. Okay, I believe uh, I see all this dust coming off. I'm gonna go ahead and get a uh, vacuum cleaner and have that uh, have a port here to pull this dust away. I think that will help greatly and other, other, because otherwise it's going to be everywhere but if I can have a vacuum cleaner pulling at it I think that will be a big help so I'm going to get that set up now so I got a uh, vacuum hooked up here running I'm going to see if that's going to help cut down on the dust so I'm actually uh, cutting it deep enough to where I can see oil starting to get pulled up with the vacuum cleaner. So I know I'm, I'm breaching the, uh, the cover here. See if I can fry this up. There is oil coming up out of here too. The thing is full of oil. So oil was being pulled up. You can see it all over this, and I'm pretty sure it may, I don't believe it's supposed to be in there. So let's see if I can get this to come up. Ooh. Yep, got it under there. So I'm going to leave that one in there and try to work it around. really want to go too too deep in there with my blade I don't know what's in there it's just starting to split the cover right there I'll try going this way yeah there's a lot of oil in there Ooh, wow at that so there's all the wiring I didn't get very close to the wiring so what I'm interested in is that number two wire you know the uh, my car is a diesel and it's gonna have a, a lot of vibration and it could be the you know those combination of that vibration and all this fluid in there could be detrimental so now I gotta, I gotta figure out how to get this drained out of here. It's a lot, uh, a lot more oil than I was expecting. And I'll probably let this drain a good long while before I even work on it. I 
there's my connections and I see the number two wires right there. But I'll need to uh, check into that a little. So I have found that this uh, second wire here is disconnected. It's actually disconnected down onto the PC board here. So there's a silicone uh, potting compound here. Then I'm going to have to carefully work out of the way. I can see the end of the wire there and it's loose. It's free. So what I need to do is carefully remove this potting compound to try and determine where that wire is to be soldered on that board. And I believe uh, once I can solder that wire back on there, I believe that will repair it. Let me see if I can zoom in. Maybe. It's the second wire right here. And there's some potting compound. It's very elastic. And very soft I can move it right out of the way but it comes right back so I'm having to figure out a way to pull it away and and trim it very gently because the wire is very fine it's almost to me it's, it's almost laughable how delicate this is I can't imagine why uh, they wouldn't have made it a little more robust than this but anyway that's what I'm faced with now is soldering that one wire on and then I believe this module will work.